A lot of these gold and silver predictions are a little bit crazy and not to be taken too seriously. However, there are some that are way out there. But this gold price prediction is something that is quite alarming, especially given who is making the prediction and why we should take it very seriously and why you should be prepared for what could be ahead in 2024. Let's explore! Gold's price has shown a lot of upside in the past couple of years. We have seen it hit well over $2,000 an ounce a couple of times over the past couple of years, reaching its all-time nominal high. However, there's still a lot of room to move for gold in terms of its uh, real price, its price adjusted for inflation. And we're still not going to get there even with this prediction, which is why I think we should take it seriously for a couple of different reasons. I'm going to be reporting from an article here as reported by Shift Gold that talks a little bit about a forecast that JP Morgan of all companies has made a prediction. This big bank, the biggest bank really in the world, who has been known to manipulate the price of gold and silver. I've documented that on this channel. They're making a pretty bullish call on gold to reach record highs next year. So let's talk a little bit about that as we go through this article here. They are forecasting gold to hit $2,000 an ounce by the end of this year and continuing to rise in price in 2024 to record highs. That's right. As the economy goes round and round, things begin to shift in, into focus. And there's a lot of things not talked about in this article that I'm going to refer to here. But in its latest note, the executive director of Global Commodities Research Greg Shearer projects the price of gold will average around $2,175 an ounce by the end of 2024. That would represent an 11% increase from the current price. That doesn't sound like out of the realm of possibility. It seems very doable considering what could happen next year. Shearer anticipates the end of Federal Reserve hiking cycle after the July meeting with a cut likely by the middle part of next year. He said there's even further upside potential for gold if the U.S. economy falls into a recession. And by the way, we are seeing more and more indicators that that is going to happen. We'll talk about that here in a moment. The deeper the recession, the more the Fed will have to cut interest rates, which is more supportive of gold. Now, there's a lot more to it than that. We also have to look at energy prices, oil, and other things like uranium have gone up dramatically here. There's kind of a boom happening right now. And why is that? Because people are starting to see that indeed there is a need for alternative forms of energy that are clean, but also something that's called the baseline energy, which is something that is not really there yet in terms of other renewable resources. Nuclear power is staging a comeback of epic proportions, providing energy security amid a jarring backdrop of geopolitical turmoil. Because it can be mined, produced, and processed domestically, countries don't have to rely on global markets and bid up prices. So this clean and baseload source, and that's critical, what is so important nowadays, especially with the supply chain issues that we're starting to see disruptions. You've heard me talk about that with trucking companies, major ones going out of business. Energy is needed, something that's portable and dense, and that's what nuclear provides. Nuclear fuel is gaining adoption and emerging as a go-to clean and secure power source. Now, America is dangerously close to losing our uranium fuel industrial base. We are almost completely dependent on foreign uranium imports. State-owned entities in Russia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan are supplying almost half of the fuel used by America's reactor fleet. And this is where the sponsor of this video comes into play with Traction Uranium. The U.S. ticker symbol is TRCTF. They are a uranium and rare earth mining exploration company active in the world-renowned Athabasca region in Canada. This area is like the Saudi Arabia of uranium. The Athabasca Basin is known as the world's leading source of high-grade uranium, 
with about 20 times the average international purity. Bowen Tan, the company's technical advisor, was instrumental in the 1975 discovery of the Key Lake uranium deposit in Saskatchewan. As a chief geologist, he was in charge of the delineation drilling of the deposit with reserves of 200 million pounds. He also developed a new and efficient way of drilling known as the vectoring technique. Camco Key Lake was the third largest uranium deposit in the Athabasca Basin, and it's home to the largest uranium mill in the world. Traction's Key Lake South project is only five kilometers away from that mill. They've already done the latest aerial surveys and samples of the coveted black soil to show incredible potential. Traction Uranium has a phenomenal share structure. They have institutional shareholders, among which are Sprott Capital, Canaccord Genuity, and Research Capital. All told, institutional investors and high net worth individuals comprise 30% of the ownership stake. With the most powerful part is that the founders and strategic partners own an additional 55%, which makes it one of the tightest and most closely held companies ever profiled on this channel. This is a high risk, high reward situation. Another company made a huge discovery nearby and their stock rocketed up over 500%. The same could happen with traction. It's not necessarily saying that it will, but that amount of risk means that, uh, you know, there could, it could be the opposite direction here too. But the thing is, is they are making a move in an area that has shown great promise. Now is the case with any types of stocks of this nature, you should do your own due diligence and research. I'm gonna post a link in the description below to their website where you can reach out and contact them. Their US ticker symbol again is TRCTF and it's something to consider. Now, talking about gold again and what's happening in the economy that is gonna move not only energy prices up, uh, but also gold up. And I think this is something that's profound because yes, you hear me talk a lot about how gold uh, is tied with the dollar. But you know, oil is something I was reminded by a subscriber on this channel that uh, oil should be looked at as well too because uh, there there is a correlation too. Really, they're all three kind of tied together. And we've seen the oil market kind of move and back and forth a bit. And that is something to watch out for, which is one reason why I think uranium stocks are kind of going up because it's a bipartisan initiative to try to get more uh, nuclear uh, power. This is a quote here from Shabir that says, we are in a very prime place where we think gold ownership and long allocation to gold and silver is something that acts as both a late cycle diversifier and something that will perform as we look into the next sort of 12 to 18 months. For him to say that, being in the commodity sector at, at JP Morgan is quite astounding because we see what JP Morgan has done in the past. Is he setting us up for that to happen in the future? Is he manipulating the price of gold and silver to an extent? I don't know. I don't know that I would necessarily go that far. That sounds a slightly bit conspiratorial, but who knows? But nonetheless, for him to say that, seeing that there may be trouble ahead in the economy, with much stronger than expected second quarter GDP growth and continued labor market strength, aside from what I reported on recently, because I do think there are chefs at the Cook the Books Club, a growing number of people in the mainstream now think the U.S. has escaped the clutches of a recession, despite the Fed driving interest rates to its highest level in 16 years. And remember, we just got from Fitch a knockdown of our credit rating uh, to AA+, and we have not seen that since 2011. So this is something that there's plenty of signs that a recession is looming including 15 consecutive drops in the index of leading economic indicators, um, the most consecutive negative prints since the 2007 and 2008 crisis. And we've seen an inverted yield curve and a rising number of corporate defaults. The housing market is also uh, you know, teetering a bit there too. And even more importantly is the commercial real estate market. Pay attention there to see what happens. There's a lot of different factors that could lead to it because likely the Federal Reserve will have to pivot next year at some point in time. They may push the envelope. By the time this year ends, there very well could be another rate hike. 
um, to try to see if they can test the waters there as we head into a presidential election. But keep in mind, everything, it seems, is political. And there's no question that they do not want to, to rock the boat uh, with, for whoever is in power right now because whoever is in power right now is the ultimate of the establishment and uh, the administrative state, which they want power and they want control. And they don't want to upset that apple cart in any way, shape, or form, as we've seen. But nonetheless, gold can certainly is poised to go up. $2,175 an ounce in 2024 this sounds very reasonable and sounds like it could happen. Which is why I would encourage you to, if you have gold, hold on to it. Um, even if you don't buy any more, because I think it's going to go up. Now, does that mean it will? No, but I do agree completely with this sentiment. Um, but again, they could be wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? We could see gold going down for no one reason or another. There's a lot of complexities in the market. You have to leave room for all sorts of scenarios to play out. And But this is why we hold on to our gold no matter what. And if you see it dip below a certain price, there's a buying opportunity for you. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>